statistics first of all we'll have a quick recap mean mean is just sum of observations divided by the total number of observations for ungrouped data if we have a grouped data we have to multiply each one of them by their frequencies like this for example we have two edge gel pens for 50 rupees each and a black pen for 10 rupees and these four clips for five rupees each then we'll have to do this calculation is that it so uh, this one is for ungrouped data opposite clear for continuous group data we'll just have to take midpoints of them like if we have 100 to 200 we'll take 100 as the midpoint and we'll do the same calculation as we did in this in the orange paper but these methods are so complex for frequencies in the order of thousands and in lakhs and for those we have shortcut methods and the first method is the assumed mean method in this method we'll take a and that a is very very helpful in this method we'll just have to shift the scale the number scale from its point to a as the origin and our step deviation method is just the evolved process of this method Actually, what happens is we have H as a common factor in our observations and in our calculations and we take it out and we calculate this and we multiply it later in this formula. For understanding it more clear, we'll take a more example. Here we have a continuous grouped data. In these, for class intervals, we'll take mid values of each one of them. And since we have to learn the step deviation method, I have done the calculations prior in this we have given the frequencies and step deviation method is a shortcut method to calculate the result very soon or very fast we have to calculate the value of di and before that we have to take a a is just the mid value of the observations take mid because mid will be helpful you can take any value but the mid value makes the calculation more easier so take the mid value as a and then calculate bi which is just xi minus the a now to make it more easier we have ui for ui just take common factor out of them and divide it by that the value of h which is the common factor is 10 here you can clearly see that you can take 5 as well but 10 is more appropriate so we get minus 21012 and since we have frequencies here we have to multiply each frequency by the observation we get FIUI as 4 the number of observations or the number of frequencies sum of frequencies is 50 we can easily calculate it as follows we get this as the result combined arithmetic mean combined arithmetic mean is useful when we have k times of means like x1 bar which is the mean of n1 observations and x2 bar which is the mean of n2 observations then such we have k observations then their combined arithmetic mean would be given by this formula and one more cool thing is if we have x1 bar as the mean of these observations then if we multiply a to each observation and add a constant b to it then their combined arithmetic mean would be given by ax bar plus b and one thing you have to remember is arithmetic mean depends on origin and scale median median is just the middlemost or the central value for example if we have seven numbers they are odd and we have to calculate median the median will be four you can clearly see the middlemost value right but if we have even numbers to calculate the mid value we have to take this value plus this next value and divide it by 2 to get 4.5 as the median here we have the formula the median for odd number of observations is n plus 1 by 12th observation as we have in this example n is 7 plus 1 is 8 by 2 that is the fourth observation the fourth observation is, is itself 4 but if we have even number of observations then we have to 
what we have to do is we have to calculate n by 12th observation plus the next observation divided by 2. In this example, you can clearly see that the n by 12th in 8 is 4 plus the next is 5. 5 plus 4 divided by 2, we get 4.5. Now, median for a continuous grouped data is given by this formula. And to understand this formula, we will take an example, which is this. And in this example, what we have done is, we have taken a continuous grouped data. There are class intervals of width 5. First of all, we will understand what is cumulative frequency. Cumulative frequency is the sum of frequency of that interval with the preceding frequency. With the interval of preceding frequency. Fine. It will be 5. 5 plus 6, 11. 11 plus 15 will be 26. 26 plus 10, 36. 36 plus 5, 41. Plus 4, 45. 40 plus 7 and 49. And one more thing is the median class. The median class is just calculated by this method. What we have to do is we have to n by 2. n is total frequency. Sum of all the frequencies which comes out to be 49 here. And so we will calculate it and we will get 24.5. And just bigger value from 24.5 is 26. So this is our median class the formula is very very clear lower limit of median class is l the lower limit here is 15 and the f frequency of median class is also 15 c is the cumulative frequency of class preceding the median class the previous one that is 11 c is the cumulative frequency preceding the median class which comes out to be 11 h is the class interval which is 5 to 10 5 here so we'll put all the values in the formula and we'll get our answer mod mod is that value which is repeated the maximum number of times or we can say it is the value which have the maximum frequency for example, in our this case, paper clips wins the title of becoming a mode. But if we have a continuous group data, we have to apply this formula. And in this formula, we have these things. And in these, we can say model class is repeating. So we must know what a model class is. A model class is nothing but the class which has the maximum frequency. And if we know what a model class is, we can easily apply this formula. L is lower limit of model class, H is width of model class, FM is frequency of model class, and FM minus 1 is the previous to the model class, and FM plus 1 is just next to the model class. After all these things, we have relationship between median, mode, and mean. This type of relationship holds for this type of data, which is symmetrical data. In this symmetrical data, 4 is mean, mode and median. But if we don't have this kind of data, the symmetrical data, then we have this relationship. And to remember this relationship, it is very easy. 3 is more. 3 is a bigger number than 2. So 3 will come before 2. And in median and mode, you just have to remember that she if she is your girlfriend and she just wants to shop whenever she come with you so she is too mean she is too mean got my point right so two comes with mean and two comes later so it is very simple mode equals three median minus two mean Woo! recap is over we head towards mean deviation. For an ungrouped data, the mean deviation is 1 upon the number of observation and their sum in this way. 
xi minus b and please remember the mod and b is mean mod or median it can be any number b is not necessarily be these three only it can be other than these three too it can be any value you got me right okay for other values i should take y right and for a grouped data it will be one upon sigma of fi and we have to multiply fi here too and for continuous group data it the formula will be this only but we'll take mid values as we take earlier in this example as in this example if we solve it we can do it very simple all we have to do is we have to take out x minus x bar and x minus x bar is mod as I said you x bar is 25.8 and x minus x bar is like 5 minus 25.8 which we get this when we apply mod we get this now after getting all these values we have to multiply it by the frequency which is these and we get these values we have to summation and this summation can be used in this formula and we get this value this is mean deviation the only thing you have to remember is that x bar can be replaced by a median mode or mean and it may take any value whatever given in the question standard deviation is very much similar to mean deviation the difference is that here b is mean x bar it cannot be mode or median and it is square of that factor this factor as you can see the formula and please remember that standard deviation is under root of this thing which i just talked about you it is actually under root of that thing that factor actually and here I have taken capital N and capital N is small n that is number of observation for an ungrouped data and fi will be one for that but if we have a grouped data we will be taking capital N as summation of fi's that is summation of all the frequencies and frequency will be multiplied here each frequency by each one of them now if we have a very complex frequencies and the data we apply the standard deviation method as I talked about earlier which I talked about earlier but sometimes we do a mistake in learning this relation and calculating that standard deviation standard deviation is under root of variance of x this is variance of x and this was the formula for variance of x and the question is that sometimes people do not take it as h square and take it as h please remember it that you have to take h square by n and the summation from 1 to n and then fi into ui minus u bar square this term you already know we do it in step deviation method we have two alternative things for the formula and we have to remember this one more because this will be more used similarly here this one will be more used and will be more helpful in calculating and in calculations you can clearly see how this formula arrives from this one as x bar is 1 by n from 1 to n summation of xi now take that previous example once again for calculating this thing now in this example of step deviation method I have added one more column for calculating fi us square because we require this in our formula and since we have already calculated fi ui in the previous example we will just put it in the formula and we will calculate all the things as we have known, known the n which is the summation of all the frequencies we will put it here and h is the common factor which we have taken which is 10 here and that is it we'll put it and we'll get our answer 
this is quite simple you just have to remember the formula right now coming to amazing things the coefficient of standard deviation is that is CSD is sigma by x bar x bar is mean and coefficient of variation is just multiplying it by 100 now we have some interesting properties and the properties are variance of x is independent of origin but it depends on scale and one more property which is more important since it came in the JME in 2013 question that is adding or subtracting a value from each observation does not affect variance but you should remember that it oh, it affects it affects median mod and mean but it does not affect variance of x and this was the question in 2013 JE main question if each observation is multiplied by k then resulting variance of x will be k square times the previous one 